You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This is episode 133 of the Wisdom by Wessa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Donnell. I'm Casey Wilbanks. And this is Sofia Yagela. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa on the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This podcast is brought to you by the Western and English Sales Association, WESA, which provides the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equestrian industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Don't miss out on all the news for manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. In our last episode, we talked about the Retail Roundup, the new virtual hub for retailers, but I've heard that Sophia's got something new for exhibitors, too. Yes, lots of exciting new opportunities. So we've just launched a new mentorship program where our seasoned WESA members act as mentors for our newbies because the mentors have experience with WESA and exhibiting at the WESA trade show and are able to help our new exhibitors getting through their first show. What kind of help can these mentors offer? So the mentors can share practical advice from logistics and how to set up their exhibit space, but also how to engage with the retailers and how to make the most out of all of our WESA marketing opportunities. So essentially, it's a way for our newcomers to learn the ropes and avoid some common mistakes, which is then going to set them up for success at their first WESA trade show and also beyond that. That's a great support system. But what if participants run into issues that mentors can't solve? That is no problem at all. Our exhibitors can always reach out to the WESA staff for additional support and we'll help them with any challenge or question that comes up. And if anything needs a more detailed attention, they can always reach out to Jeff, who's their direct contact and our trade show manager. But yeah, again, overall, we're super excited to offer a little bit more support to our new exhibitors starting this August. It's rodeo time in the U.S. And cowboys and cowgirls across the country, including my co-host Casey, are in hot pursuit of prize money. We're approaching the big July 4th weekend, better known in the sport as Cowboy Christmas, when rodeo contestants set up nearly impossible schedules to enter as many rodeos as possible. Now, many of the ropers at the time to that end of the arenas are well aware of the Smarty name and practice regularly on the brand's equipment. What's not as well known is the company's opened a 7,500 square foot retail outlet at its Mount Pleasant, Texas headquarters. Amanda Schaefer, Smarty's Vice President of Business Development, joins us to talk about this, plus the brand's deep involvement in youth programs. Amanda Schaefer, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today on Wisdom by Wessa. Thank you all for having me. I'm excited to visit with you all and tell you all things rodeo. Well, we want to know a lot about Smarty. We want to know some about your background that brings you into this. Let's start a bit with your background, and then let's talk about the Smarty and its birth and all the things that Alan has done with that product. And then we're going to talk about the fact you've added to the business by going into the retail world. And I also want to talk a bit about your heavy involvement Uh, in Youth Rodeo. So let's start with you. Casey will jump in here shortly, but give us your background because you'd have a deep background in the sport, and that's important. Yes, sir, I do. I graduated from West Texas A&M in 2010. I took the long road, so 2010 makes me sound younger than I am, but I started at Redosa Downs Racetrack, my home state of New Mexico. I was able to work a season there as the marketing and events manager, learned a lot, met a lot of people, made my way to Stephenville, Texas, and became a manager for Hill Shepherd Marketing Group. Worked with Clinton Anderson, Pirelli, Piranha Fly Spray, WW Equipment, and then moved from there into my role as marketing manager at Western Horseman or the Cowboy Publishing Group. And I worked for Western Horseman, Quarter Horse News, and Barrel Horse News. I stayed there three or four years. Got to meet a lot of people through my exposure at the different shows and then moved into the role of a regional marketing manager for the PBR. 
There I learned probably the most I've ever learned through my journey. A lot about budgets, marketing, uh, mainstream, m- more, you know, authentic boots on the ground. A lot, a lot of, of moving parts through the PBR. I was able to wrap up my time there right after the Iron Cowboy event in 2018. I had the largest or, you know, number one selling event, PBR event in history for a one day show. And we had, I think we had over 1,000 people in AT&T Stadium. So that was a good way to, to kind of end my, end my role there. I then moved on to the Cowboy Channel and the American, and I worked under Randy Bernard for several years and, and got to continue. When I worked at the PBR, the American and the PBR shared a weekend. And so after the PBR, I just kind of focused on the American. Did several years there, wanted to be a mom and focus on that more. I had a two-year-old. And so I, I started dabbling with an independent agency and, and independent contract for myself and went in sponsorship and marketing for the athletes, a bunch of the athletes. Through that, I was able to help Charlie Crawford get a start on his American Hero celebration. And then through that, I met the new owners of Smarty and they offered me a position as the marketing director. And I've worked with them for the last three years and now uh, I've moved into the role of vice president of the company. So lots of moving parts, lots of growth, but definitely found my happy place. Well, and I think it's important if you're going to market a product line like you do, uh, it, it's critical, I think, that the people in charge of the marketing understand what goes on inside and outside of the arena, which is, is critical. Now let's talk a bit about the breadth and the scope of uh, the Smarty line. Yes. So Ann Buck was the founder of Smarty Training, and they started in 2012. And we have since, the rope machines were very established, but we've added to them with the Bulldogger machine and the Bronx simulator. So the Smarty Bronx is one of the most unique practice machines on in, in the industry, really. So we've added to our product line there. And in 2020. To October of 22, we purchased our main competitor in the brand Helomatic. So now we have the two top com- training systems in the industry. And then in the fall of 2022, also we launched our 7,200 square foot retail space in Mount Pleasant. So the gateway to the east essentially is we, we all of the people that come back and forth to Texas in the west and we we get to have them at our store and show them what we're made of. We we have a lot of product lines, industry product lines, but mostly things that are complementary to our training, our training line and also our saddle line. We have custom saddle line and then we have a stock saddle line. So lots lots of stuff in our in our store and try to keep alliances with all of the other brands in the industry as well. Well, I want to chat a bit about this, the, the reasoning and the rationale behind the store, because clearly, you know, it's been a successful business and a growing business with all of the other product lines you carry. Opening and running a large retail operation doesn't have a lot in common with selling a tra- some training equipment. The customer may be the same, but the marketing is different. Talk a bit about what the decision, uh, what was behind the decision to go ahead and open a retail store. Yes, sir. So we we have 94 wholesale dealers across the United States and Australia. So we were aware that the retail market was there. And then we also sold direct to consumer through our e-commerce outlet. But we wanted to expand on that. Before I joined the Smarty team, I think late late in 2019, 2020, they had acquired a custom saddle business. And then also Alan had been working on the Smarty saddles, you know, in the background and had launched them. So we had the saddle component of it. And then you needed ropes to rope the, the machines that we have. So we have saddles and ropes. And then we've partnered with Cactus Gear, Equibrand bring that they all all have complementary products to what you need to rope our machines and then there was 
real Western or feed and tax store in East Texas. So there was several things that were appealing to why we should expand more than just the machines to the retail customer. Now, are you also responsible for marketing the retail store? Yes, we have a team. So our our setup is pretty unique. We have our assembly and manufacturing and then the retail side of it in Mount Pleasant but we have sales and marketing. There's seven of us located in Stephenville, Texas. So we're we're a unique setup, but we we do make it work. We have a whole manager. She does everything with our wholesale accounts, but then communicates that, that need to our marketing team. And then we have general manager at the store. Her name's Hannah O'Connor. She communicates to us as far as what the store needs. And then the team in Stephenville, we kind of push it out in every direction. Are there any plans to open more stores? Uh, no, sir. We're good with just one. So we have the Smarty, what we call the Smarty Campus in Mount Pleasant, and we have plugins and barn. We have the retail store, and then also our one of the unique things for us is we do our own manufacturing. So we do all of our steel manufacturing right there in Mount Pleasant too, and then our assembly is right there. So we have we have the Smarty Campus, and we. We're just going to make that the most we can make it and focus their simplicity and kind of making sure that we do what we do right. So not overextending ourselves. The Especially the, the, the pro sports, some of the top brands recognize the value of extending their reach into the youth sports of and, and the youth organizations. Casey participated in youth rodeo and Little Britches. Uh, one of the greatest goat tires in the country. And I know you support high school and college. I want Casey to jump in here a minute and talk about the importance for youth rodeo to have the support of companies like yours to allow them to have the, to grow, compete, and learn how to be good enough if they want to go to the professional ranks. So Casey, why don't you take over? He always gives me these big lead-ins. I haven't tied goats in 24 years, Mike. <laughs> well, but at one time you were the greatest. Weren't you the great? Weren't you the goat? I don't even. Re- I don't even remember. It's been so long. No. <laughs> Anyways, absolutely, youth rodeo is obviously, and it's not just youth rodeo. Youth sports. And I talked to a guy one time. He's a trainer at a gym, and there's so many kids in there. And I, I asked him one day. I said you don't have very many adults in here. He said, well, the kids are our future. He says, I know that's cliche to say, but if we want the sports to keep Mm -hmm. growing and it doesn't matter what sport it is, you have to start with the youth and not just getting them involved, but it's now training them properly. And so we have these athletes now Mm -hmm. and I'll go back to goat tying. I just talked to Daryl Haas. He's a rodeo judge the other day and his daughter, he showed me a goat tying video of her. She was six flat. At Stephenville's College Rodeo, and I said, "Wow, the days of sevens when I, you know, when I was going, sevens were fast. Yeah, you know, that's long gone." Mm-hmm. So there, to me, that's the importance of starting youth earlier with these unique training systems, and they're honing their skills so much earlier. Yes. So we grown and kind of try to give the kids as many resources as we can. So every year we have the young pro team, 60 kids to 30 kids. We try and just get the kids that are the most passionate about the sport. They don't even have to be good competitors, but they have to be, they have to be on the right track to being humans. Listen, because our, our mission is to cultivate champions and out of the arena. I, I, I rope for a hobby, but I have to be a champion outside of the arena in order to part in growing the sport as well. So that's very important to us is making sure that they know that there's life in the arena and out the arena and they can still all participate in this in this industry and this lifestyle. So we have the young, we have the young pros and they come in every year. We do monthly calls with them. We have resources available to them through the Western Sports Foundation. And then we have trainers. We have a male and female fitness coach on our on our team. But we and then we have a camp where we we have we love them. There's no tuition for the camp. It's part of being a part of the team. But they come to Texas for five days and we work on fitness and nutrition. We work on finance. We work on sponsorship development. We work on social media. We work on, you know, the jeans roping. Obviously, that's their that's their all time favorite part. But then helping them develop their network. And I think that if we can help them and incentivize them and be mentors to them at this age, then as they progress, they're they're going to get 
stronger and stronger. So that's that's a huge initiative for us. We try and participate with the BCRA and their youth initiatives. We're having conversations with the PRCA in doing some um, collaborations with youth initiatives. We do the high school and junior high rodeos. You know, anything and everything that we can get our hands on, we we definitely want to kind of contribute to that because we, we believe in our brand. We believe in what we have to offer and we believe in them. What well, it's such a wide range. And I, I'm a mom. I have an eight-year-old little girl and she's always kind of been mm-hmm. into dance and stuff. And now she's ready. Like you know, she wants to run barrels and it's like now. And I start <laughs> thinking, you know, all the things that you just touched on it, you know, it's not just about in the arena. And that's the the wonderful thing about the Western way of life. It It is, it's a way of life. And you guys are focusing on outside of the arena as well. And when I think about you know, getting her involved, it's way different than when I was little and the opportunities are Mm -hmm. so much larger and there's just a better, Mm -hmm. easier way to do this now. I really believe that. And you mentioned the Western Sports Foundation. I just want you to touch on that for a minute. You guys are now partnered with them. Yes, we started, we started conversations with them about a year ago. If I would have known half the stuff now or back then that I know now, you know, and how people can help me, you know, get my, get my finances in line and start early, help me with scholarships, help me with college applications, help me with, with just, you know, different things that I need to, to succeed. You know, I, I would have definitely jumped on any train I could have. So we partner with them. They help us. They speak to our kids on one of our monthly calls. They have attended camp with us. They are part of our, we sponsored the call, the first ever coaches summit at the college finals this year. They're going to be a part of our college day at the high school finals. So they, we work hand in hand with them because their resources are just so beneficial to everyone. That's so great. I just, I'm so excited. Like I said, being a mom and having a little girl, it just, it it makes the future so bright. Outside of youth rodeo, I wanted to touch exactly on your training systems and the fact that with the rope horse fraternities, I mean, team roping and roping has always been big and it is, but it's, it's huge now and it's just <laughs> it going to continue to grow. You know, Jay and Lindsay Wadhams, they stepped out years ago and created the rope horse fraternities and it's continued to grow in different ways and different avenues. And why don't you talk about the importance of some of, some of your training systems in those guys starting those young horses and not always live cattle or just the the insight you have on that. Yeah. So the fraternities are, I mean, the bloodlines, what people are breeding for, everything is, is just sort of exploded. And we all know that if you if you jump in with both feet, you're bound to learn, but you're going to have a harder time learning and almost learn the hard way. So one of the benefits that we kind of promote with our with our machines is that the the horses can be start from the ground up. It's a slow, controlled environment, um, good introduction. It helps the horse's mind keep keep sound. It helps keep the athletes sharp. So I think overall, we, we just kind of are a great tool for those guys to have available to them. We, you can, you know, you can practice one session and accomplish multiple things with our tools because you can head and heal, you can, you know, steer stop, you can do all of the things. So I feel like our machines are a huge benefit to to both the horses and trainers. And you have a pro team. Um, Obviously, these are very sought (laughs) after training systems. And if you would like (laughs) to name some of the people on your pro teams that are utilizing these in their programs, and they use them for a reason. Yeah, we have, yes, Ren, Richard, Cole Davison, Tate, Kirk, and they've all been big believers and firm believers in our product. They've been great endorsees to our product and their horses and their horsemanship and themselves have all showed that very, very well. It's so awesome. And Mike, you know what? If you ever want to learn to rope, you could always start on one of these <laughs> instead of live cattle. Just a thought. I'm just throwing it out there. Just a thought, should I want to start doing, you know, I've managed to be around the rodeo world for a long, long time and never had to throw a rope. And I think I'm going to continue. I've got a lane in the rodeo world. I stay in and want to stay in. Yeah, this is part This is part of it. I'll let you go out in the arena and make all the money yeah. and become famous. And sure. I'll just stay in the background and yeah. work on the marketing side. <laughs> go tires and have stuff for that now. Oh, I could get back in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm really surprised you two haven't met, or do you know each other? 
That's funny. I don't know. Maybe if we have um, met. I've honestly heard. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever met in person, but I've definitely been very aware of your of your name, your presence in the arena. Yeah, same. Well, we'll have to change that. We'll have to meet. You have, you know, I loved your opening. Yeah. You've been involved in just really every part of everything good about this industry. And it's no surprise that mm-hmm. Smarty, you know, reached out and and has you have you along <laughs> for the ride. So it's been really great talking to you. Mike, do you have any more burning questions? Well, I want to know when you're working for the PBR, did you ever get on one? Ten of them. She probably did. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. It's cardboard ones that they have in the grocery. Yeah, that's about as close as I would get. Yep. I just wanted to ask back in my other day, I used to produce women's bull riding events. So I always am curious when people get around oh, wow. if they've if they've done it. And if you have the desire, we probably can still set you up. Yeah, no, anyway. no, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, hey, thanks for spending the time with us. We've learned a lot about you, a lot about Smarty a lot about how the rodeo world benefits from Smarty. But I think equally important for Wessa, we've learned that you now also are gaining a grasp and an understanding of both the retail, on-site retail store business to couple with your e-commerce business. And I think those skills are critical as the company grows because that's where the revenue stream comes from. Yes, yes. I think being familiar with both sides of it helps us be a better partner to our wholesalers and also a better partner to the other stores that are in the industry. So we're we're very excited about it. Well, and I congratulate you for doing that. I want to thank you for taking the time. Yes, thank you guys. I appreciate it very much. The show notes and links from today's show can be found at wisdombywessa.com. And of course, we'd love to hear your feedback. If you have some, there's a contact link on the website. The Wisdom by Wessa show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players, and you can also listen on wisdombywessa.com. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Wessa, where the industry meets.